So I'd like to find out um, from you, Wesi. You have um, people around you. You have close friends. You have your family. So what do you think you're most appreciative of? What do the people around you give to you that you are appreciative of that, you know, um, without it, you don't think you would be your full self? This is something that, have, that has become more apparent in these past three months. Because with all the accidents and the deaths, you kind of can think about life in a deep way. So I've learned, I've always been the type of person, you know me, to value my family more than in any event. I'm with one or two of my siblings. What they bring to me, I feel, is unconditional love. They don't care about my worthiness. Yeah. They really don't care if I'm a successful artist or not. They really do. They see, if they see the frown, if it's hidden behind a smile, a lot of people would never do. My mother will notice if I've lost the spark in my eye, and she'll ask me, even if I'm trying to pretend, what's wrong? You know that type of that's, thing. That's such a mum thing, because I'm know? always saying that about my mum. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. For me, that's what I value most in life. And I feel like there's no amount of money in life that can acquire that. So if I had to lose my family, God forbid, and I became a billionaire, there's no person that I can pay that, like a huge sum of money, and will give me genuine love because you know that came at a price. Yeah. So to to acknowledge that I have something that priceless every day, in human form, you know, even the hugs are genuine. You can tell when someone is hugging you for formality's sake, yeah. and then when you when someone is hugging you for healing you, or for healing themselves, or just care. And those are the things that I, I, I value most about my life and my family. And I don't know about you. Well, um, I, think it's, I think it's very important to have sort of a support system. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm very, I'm very introverted. I'm very yes. shy. If yeah. I'm not doing any work back then, I, I was in school. If I'm not in class or doing any work, I am at home in the house. Yeah. You know, so I'm not, I don't like going to social events if I'm not working and things like that. So, you know, it's... I feel like I'm grateful that I have at least, uh, you know, someone who you can can be there for you, you know, when you don't want to be, you know, so around talk about else someone. What are you talking about? No, Lisa? listen. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, we, you, we, we. Someone <laughs> like your mom, People, your dad, yes, your best friend, yes. you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, when yeah. you have, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> As a parliament, we are yes. doing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, having um, at least, my point was at least someone, because not so many people have the opportunity no, to have more than true. one, you know, of that kind of person. Maybe it's just your mom, maybe it's just your that sister. That is very powerful, actually. Yeah. At least one person. Yes, yeah. exactly. So yeah. for me, I'm lucky enough to have, you know, a few a people bunch, yeah. Yeah, who, you know, are my support system. You know, when you do a song, and I think my favorite thing about it also is that they are honest people. You know, so, because you don't want people who are just there for you because, oh, they, they love you. So everything that you do is like, yeah, 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 no, it's okay. You also want people who sort of put you in line when you need to. Like, you know, you send someone a song before you release it and they say, you know what, I think here and there could have been better. Because, you know, I mean, more minds work better. You know, if, if I ask you about a song, you have a better, you know. Um, you say, maybe that backing vocal should be like this. And I'm grateful that I have people like that, you know. So the people around me are literally, I think, largely the reason that I am who I am today. Yeah. You know, family, friends, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful that, you know, I'm able to have a support system. And I'm grateful also to be able to be a support system nice. for someone. That's very because, important. Because um, I, I love seeing people happy. I love seeing people, you know, fulfilled. And so everything that I used to love saying that in another life, I'd probably do a job like maybe a personal assistant or things like that because I love seeing people fulfill their dreams and all of that. And to be able to contribute to that also for me is huge. So, yeah, I'm very grateful to just have, you know, support. people around me. And to be a support system. Yes. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Talking about support system, um, what are, like, your hopes and dreams for where you come from and your family, the country, or even the world? Yeah. Well, you know, the world is, ish, there's a lot going on. 
um, you know, there's there's war this side going on, you yeah, know, there's civil wars in different yes, places. Yes, exactly. And um, on on more community level, you have people experiencing gender-based violence every day. You have politicians who, you know, in different countries are stealing resources. You know, so my hopes and aspirations for the world, you know, I, I would love for the world to heal. There's a lot of hurt in the world. There's a lot of pain in the world. There's a lot of evil in the world. Mm. And it's really sad to see because if I have children one day, I don't want to raise them in a world where, you know, my daughter can't um, take a walk to the market at 19 hours because she's scared that she'll be mugged. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I'd love the world to be a safer place. Yeah. Um, to be more biased, a safer place for women as well. Because, you know, um, people, I saw a post, someone was saying, oh, women are so, you know, you ask a woman, let's go out here, and she's so unsafe. You know, if the world was a better place, we wouldn't have to feel unsafe. You know, we'll just go and, you know, enjoy ourselves. But every time, you know, I, I don't think there's any woman who has never at any point in her life felt intimidated walking by a group of men, for example. You know, because it's not that those particular men have ever done anything to you but you know that you feel unsafe because of the kind of world yeah. that you live in. So I, I would like to see a safer world for women, for children. I would like to see a world where we genuinely care about each other. With social media now, like we were talking about earlier, people are just very careless with what they say, with what they do. They think they are just talking to a keyboard or a computer or another phone. You know, um, but there's human beings behind that. And social media affects... I'm one person who um, I'm sort of in between mm. because there are days when someone will say something to me and it will really affect me. It spoils my whole day, you know, but there are times I can brush it off. But there are people who are not strong enough to do that, you know. So you will tell someone, no, you are, you are this, you are that. And you think you are just saying that. For you, it's just a comment. You've left a comment on a page. You forget about it. Tomorrow, you won't even be thinking about it. But that person who you said that to, you know, we'll probably be thinking about it, probably be eating them up. Yeah. So I want to see a safer world, a world where we care more about each other, you know, um, as human beings. Do you think it's possible? You know what? Um, I think it's possible. Um, not fully, because I, I hate to say this, but sometimes I feel like you can never completely get rid of bad. You know, it's sort of like, the yin and the yang, there's always some good in the bad, some bad in the good. So, but I feel like there are certain aspects where we can um, do better. To say the world will completely be a good place, I, I really don't know, because things like conflict will always arise. Even just you and I, you know, the, a, day that, a day will come when we'll be recording a song and I don't like your lyrics and you really love them and eventually it turns into, you know, a whole thing. So I don't think we can completely get rid of everything negative you know in the world but i think we can make the world a better place yeah i agree with everything you said yeah and then just like because it's women's month do you think there's um prejudices in 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 fields of work that you need that you think can be challenged and how do you think that those can be tackled I feel like being a woman in any field mm -hmm. um, today is a challenge in itself because years and years and years back, the role of a woman was to be at home, take care of the children, cook, clean, you know, that was the role of a woman. So now you're living in a world where women have said, no, I have the ability to work. I'm, an, I'm a human being even before I'm a wife, even before I'm a mother, I'm a person on my own. Yes. So, you know, you have women who are in fields that people thought were for men. You have women who are flying planes, you know, in the aviation industry. You have women musicians, you know, like ourselves. You have doctors and all of that. Women are doing, you know, are, are dominating these, these places. And because of the mindset that is still changing, we are still in a very transitional phase, people feel intimidated. I've heard men who have said, you know what, it's very difficult for me to listen. If the boss is a woman, because, you know, they somehow feel that because I am a man, I cannot be led by a woman, you know. And um, also even issues of um, maybe sexual harassment and things like that is very, women experience it a lot more. You know, you'll be in the workplace and, you know, you're wearing your dress and everything and someone passes, you know, very horrible comments about it. And so it's very difficult as a woman 
to just be in spaces. But I love that we're taking up these spaces. We're not letting it stop us. Mm. You know, women are managing directors, women are doing all this. So I love that, um, yeah, women are able to do that. Um, so it's very inspiring to, to see. Um, and even speaking of the music, rather, because um, you, a lot of the work that you do is music related. Have you ever experienced kind of prejudice towards you on the basis of you being a woman? Of course. Um, like I said, I think the, the, the weapon that has been used against me for a long time <laughs> is that I'm too No emotional. weapon formed against you shall <laughs> <now> prosper. <laughs> That's what I keep on saying. Yeah. Yeah, th but the weapon that has been used against me most of the time was that you are too emotional. Mm. And I always tell people that's my superpower. And that's when they lose the fight. You know, because when Muzi, someone starts to attack you, and then they're saying your dreads, and then you're like, I love my dreads, yeah. they kind of lose their power. Mm. Because whatever the opinions they have, so like, she doesn't care. Like, if you, you can say a lot of things about me. You can even show her my slippers. I'll feel bad. But when you start to say you're too emotional, that's where you lose the fight. Because that's my superpower. Yeah. That's where all my music comes from. That's where my entire personality is, is based on. That's, where, that's how I worship. You know what I mean? So being too emotional for me has been used against me. A long time ago it used to irritate me, but I'm fine. And then we always have these conversations with our comrades where they say at, uh, at when, a man is, when a man cries at work, no, the man is passionate. When a woman cries at work, she's, um, she's too emotional, she's incompetent for the job. So if, if a man, let's say for instance, um, went on Irenda, was coaching this football team, and they win, they score, and then, you know, tears are coming down his eyes. Like, wow, the coach has cried. It's so beautiful. It's emotional. But if it's something like, ah, women are too emotional for sports. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, it's, but it's beautiful. Yeah. The emotions of a woman are, are, are very valid. Like I said, on the biological basis of being female, that is beautiful. Yeah. Mm. So let's kind of end this, first of all, mm -hmm. um, on a lighter note. Yeah. It, in the life of Wesi, you're not working, you have no show, you have no event, you're not going to any protest. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably watching sports. Yeah? Yeah. I'm probably watching sports. I'm probably playing with the kids. I'm a very interesting person because um, besides interacting with my immediate family and uh, supporting different other types of talent and passions, I like to be alone. I like to be in complete silence for hours. That's what I like. Or I, can, I can do this for seven days. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet, not talking to people. Um, Conveniently not talking to people, not like, yeah, don't talk to people. Neither. Mm. When I just choose like, okay, so I don't, I really don't pay attention to, oh no, she's moody, what, what, what. I think I, I, I'm privileged to be surrounded by people who love me enough to understand me. And they know like, okay, she's a creative, she needs to, to detox. Yeah. So I don't know about you. For me, I, I also love my alone time. Um, I'm very... Sometimes I feel like I don't have the ability to be too social. So if I'm not doing anything, I'm probably at home. As long as I have phone, food, and proper internet, and probably my dogs around me, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm, very, I'm very chilled. But we need to go and watch basketball movies. You must take me. I always I'll be do. waiting for you. I always <laughs> do. The other time, <laughs> Mwiza. You ditched me. No, okay, let's listen. For let's a man. No, listen, Mozi. <laughs> I can explain. I can explain. <laughs> God bless. When I listen to your new song, one, I love it. Thank Two, you. we need to discuss <laughs> how sincere it is. No, we shall discuss as we I head out. <laughs> Why don't you want to do it here? <laughs> I love it. I'm, I love it. I just like, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Look at Thank you, you so much. No, I'm... Wow, is he? <laughs> so, it's Women's Month. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like women out there to know about themselves, about being a woman? Um, what would you say to inspire someone who's looking right now and wants to be like Wazi? Okay. So, first of all, I want to acknowledge the women that have been struggling. Even the ones that struggled, and they, we can refer to them posthumously. Their lives are valid, their stories are valid, and they need to be heard. 
now and forever. That's one thing I would like to acknowledge. And number two, for us that are living, especially the young women that are coming up and the women just there in general, I see so much beef on social media. And to be honest, it's okay to have misunderstandings. But if your sister offends you, like me and Faith, why should the world know about it? We shouldn't take pleasure in t tearing each other apart. Sometimes it's us. You know what I mean? Like the story of a mother who tells her daughter, it's your fault that you got raped. Mm. That way I shouldn't be sitting like this, should be sitting like that. Of course, there are certain behaviors that shouldn't be encouraged. But you should never blame the victim. No matter how someone is seated, it doesn't give someone permission to violate them. So women shouldn't be in front, because this is the reality. Women are sometimes spearheading these conversations. Eh, but in Marichiramo, these days. You know? And all that is true. But it shouldn't be used as a weapon to blame and shame victims. And the last thing that I would like is for us to build each other. So if I have a problem with you, I'd rather iron it out privately. And if it's not ironed out, I'd rather cut off ties privately than to come and say, now, I don't like Misa's music, I think mm. it's trash, what, what, now to affect your, your livelihood, just to show you that I'm superior over you, but then I'm struggling. My struggles as a woman th are the same. I might be privileged in more ways or in different ways than you, but it doesn't mean that my struggles are completely different from yours. So we can, there's ways that women can resolve their conflicts without involving the public and without publicly tearing each other down. You know, even, even when you see something has happened, these womanly days, and sh someone has soiled themselves, you don't have to announce it. Hey, moneni, mm -hmm. you, 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 you know what I mean? You can just give someone a chitenge without embarrassing them. You can even whisper the correction in their ear. So they can learn. It's humiliating enough. You know what I mean? So I think that we should be kinder to one another on a woman-to-woman -woman basis. And because it's Women's Month, I also want to acknowledge the women that are dealing with infertility. Because sometimes you could mistake Women's Day for Mother's Day. And of yeah. course, we, our mothers are the most significant women. Most of us are the most significant women in our lives. So we find that the conversation is really... Mostly for most mothers, people, it's about yeah. mothers. But there's women that have that were born biologically with the inability to have children. That doesn't, doesn't le make them less. And there's women, women who decide who not decide. to have children. Yes. Yeah. I ju yeah, I just, you know. And both of those shouldn't be made to feel less than a woman. And they shouldn't be made to feel bad or to be stigmatized or discriminated against in any way. So any form of stigma by men or fellow women. Some, sometimes it's the women that two years into marriage, people are greeting you. When, is, when are you getting, when are you having mm. a baby? Hmm? When are you having a baby? People don't know your body. People don't know your choices. And whether you are able to have children and you've chosen to marry and never have children, what business is it for the next person, whether it's a woman or a man, as long as you and your spouse are happy, yeah. you get. So there's so many conversations about women and motherhood, but for general, I want to say there's a lot of women. For example, like Barbara Banda. You don't expect Barbara Banda to have nails on, yeah. to have her lashes on. With the nature of her lifestyle, she's very mucho. You know, but that doesn't make her less of a woman. But you could see some of the conversations on social media. We shouldn't be, you know, pretentious and what, what, what. She's, <laughs> she's doing things that you and me can't do yeah. collectively. I'm about to flip my tires when she's doing her thing, when she's training, running around the stadium. We, we can't do that. So that's what I want to talk about. When it comes to women's math, we shouldn't just make it about one aspect of womanhood, which is motherhood. We should talk about the whole shebang. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that you can watch Cost to the Other Side every Sunday at 19 hours by downloading the Airtel TV app and watch Diamond TV on the go regardless of anywhere you may be.